My name is Mark Riley, and I uh, am a pharmacist. I own a pharmacy, and I'm director of the Arkansas Pharmacists Association. I've done about 130 of these presentations to about 130 of employers in total. And, and what we've seen is, is, is an awareness once we've been able to explain the other side of the story. Now, two things we, for you as employers we need to define for you for, to understand this. One is average wholesale price. The best way to describe AWP or average wholesale price is it's like the manufacturer's suggested retail price on an automobile. It's not the number you pay, but it is the number that everything's figured from in brand drugs. It's consistently figured from. Now, on the other side, we have here MAC, or maximum allowable cost. Because AWP, or average wholesale price, was not an accurate number in generic drugs, you might have you know, five generic drugs that had the same MAC, and one cost $5, $100, and $110, and $120, and $150, and 175 There's really no relation. That's a, a whole development in that industry from, from back in the late 70s and early 80s. But the point is, is that payers, whether they're employers, insurance companies, Medicaid programs, whoever paid for prescription drugs, finally came to the conclusion, look, we can't really use AWP in, in generic drugs. There's no relevance there. So we're just going to determine, make our own list, and call it ma maximum allowable cost. And in its simplest form, it means this. No matter what you paid for the drug, we know about what the market is. We're going to set a number, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, and that's the most we're going to pay for that drug. You go get it from any generic manufacturer you want to, but we're not paying you more than, than whatever that number is. And so that's, that's how max work. And so it's, hard, it's important to understand that. The first thing that we're going to talk about is spreads. There's a common term used in the industry now called spreads, and it's very simple. And it's, and it's almost unbelievable that we've gone a decade, a decade and a half with this going on without, without the business community understanding it. But they've not heard anybody telling the other side of the story. And spreads are very simple. It's the difference in what you as an employer pay for a prescription versus what the pharmacist has paid. Let me say that again. It's the difference in what you pay as an employer for a prescription versus what the pharmacist has paid. And the 120 employers that I've talked to I can count on one hand the number that knew that what they paid for a prescription was not what the pharmacy was paid for that same prescription. It's, this is a, uh, a practice that's been totally hidden from the employers. We're going to first talk about multiple MAC lists and discount lists, or these MAC prices are put into categories like this. You will look in a PBM computer, you will see pages of charts like this, or just basically spreadsheets. And down the left column will be the drugs. I just put A, B, C, and D. But you will, you will literally have all the drugs that come generically in a, in a list. That list may be 1,200, 1,400, 15, 1,600 drugs, all the MAC drugs that are out there. Now, with each one of those drugs, there's a set of pricing information. Understand the pricing information is per unit, per tablet, per capsule, per milliliter, whatever the unit of the drug being in question is. You see the horizontal rows by each drug, and if you'll notice, they consistently, the numbers get larger. And this is just a representative sample. The vertical columns are called schedules, and employers, payers, whoever the payer is through the PBM will be put and chosen and put in some schedule. Pharmacies are generally paid in specific pharmacy schedules, which will be on the left edge of this uh, spreadsheet. And so this process is so simple, let's don't confuse it. If you were a company, and when you were in max schedule five here, and drug A was filled, and it was a tablet, for every tablet that, went, that was filled nationwide that went through your computers, or, or for your employees, if, if you're a specific employer, you would pay 20 cents per tablet to the PBM. The PBM would pay pharmacies 10 cents a tablet for that. Subtract the two, it's 10 cents, and 10 cents goes in the PBM's pocket for just running it through a switch at the speed of light on every tablet fill for that prescription. Now there are multi-millions of these being filled every day, running at the speed of light, and it's simply a com computer function. The employer, if it was a capsule, it was drug C, and the employer was in schedule six, they would pay 60 cents, the pharmacy would be paid 30, and the PBM would put 30 cents in their pocket. So they're in a specific amount they make on each prescription, it's simply a function of the math that we're gonna see in the next slide, and that is how much the difference is, how many tablets are used, capsules are used, what the difference between the two numbers are. So these numbers can be $2 spread, it can be $120 spread. Now, I've been asked the question several times, 
how do you determine which schedule I'm in? Well, what we found is the more sophisticated the buyer is, the more they know about it, the more that the, the they understand what's going on, they tend to move to the left. So there's multiple schedules. I'm just showing you a few here. Second thing we want to talk about on the spread games is you use a MAC or the MAC list, maximum allow cost, versus the AWP discount formulas. Again, we're talking about generic drugs, and we said that the AWP numbers don't relate to the cost of the drug very well. Well, guess what? In many cases, the PBMs still use it behind the scenes as they price prescriptions. So they will go to an employer and say, okay, you're getting 14% off on your brand drugs. We'll give you 50% off on your, on your generic drugs, as an example. Well, let's see what happens. I took this drug. I just called it drug A. It was roughly based on alprazolam a couple of years ago when I put this together. I picked one of the strengths. But what we did was we found a drug that had oh, about an $80 per 100 tablet AWP, 80 cents a tablet was the average wholesale price. Actual cost of that was about eight cents a tablet. Wasn't expensive at all. It was about a tenth of what the AWP was. Pharmacies were set at a MAC of about 12 cents. We looked at a few contracts, so there was a little bit of buying in this for the pharmacy side. And understand that when you, we have, a, as employers, you need to know that when you talk about a $2 fee, pharmacies don't live on $2 fees. You know, cost of dispensing surveys show that pharmacies have to make about $10 a prescription to, to stay open. And so, you know, there has to be some money on the buying side averaged across the prescriptions. But contracts we looked at showed an average of about a 12 cent MAC. There was an employer rate of about AWP minus 50 percent. So let's just look at the simple math. Again, you just plug the numbers into the equation then. The MAC was 12 cents, so the pharmacy, and I used 100 tablets to keep the math simple. 12 cents times 100 tablets, so the pharmacy would be paid $12 on the cost side, plus a $2 dispensing fee, a total of $14. Just remember that number, $14. Well, let's look and see what the employer paid. The employer was on an AWP minus 50% rate and no fee. So the AWP minus 50%, 50% of $80 is $40. So we've got $40, $80 minus $40, it's 50% off, equals $40. So the PBM charged the employer $40, paid the pharmacist $14, put $26 in their pocket for just running it through a switch at the speed of light. Simple way to make money. Now, is it always $26? No. As I said before, it might be $350. It might be $11. It might be a dollar and a half. It might be $63. It, it's all over the board. I've, I have analyzed people's information. They brought it to me, and I've looked at it, and I've seen that number be as high as $150 on a single prescription. It is, it, there's a lot of money involved in this process simply based on the number of tablets, the differences in the spread based on which schedules you're in. Let's, take, now let's move over to mail order and take this same prescription to make a point here. We're going to compare apples to apples in every situation. The AWP is still $80, same as it was in the retail pharmacy. Then we're going to talk about a 100-tablet sample. The PBMs typically say we'll give you AWP minus 50%, for example. In retail, we'll give you 60% if you'll take it to mail. We'll give you another 10%. So, let's look at the math. If you've got an $80 prescription, 60% of 80 is 48. This makes it a $32 prescription, okay? So it's 32, and that's for apples to apples, one month. Three months, it'd be $96, but we're gonna compare it month to month so that we, we, we get a fair comparison. I'm going to assume the mail order paid eight cents a tablet, just like the retail pharmacy did. Now, if they paid seven cents or six cents because they bought it and bought it, more power to them. That's the American way. And, and that's not part of the equation here. And that's not part of the transparency in what somebody paid for the product. It's what your money went to pay as an employer. So let's assume, though, to keep it apples to apples, that they paid $0.08. Cents. They make a gross profit. It's a $32 prescription minus $8. They make a $24 gross profit. Now, if we go back and look at what the pharmacy made, the pharmacy had $0.08 cents a tablet, $8, and got paid a total of $14. The pharmacy got $6 gross profit in that prescription. The PBM made 24 on the same prescription. Plus, there's some other things I haven't even talked about. You might say, well, they made 24. They made 26 on the spread. In this example, they did. But generally speaking, they make more money on the mail order side. We hadn't even talked about the games, the hidden games they play on the mail order side that we're going to get to in just a moment. Third thing is NDC manipulations or package size. A little bit of education needs to be done here, first of all, and that is that on every bottle of, of prescription drugs in America, there is an 11-digit number that we, that's the national drug code number or the NDC number. The first five digits of that number define the manufacturer. 
The second four digits define what the drug is under that manufacturer. And the last two numbers define the package size, whether it comes in hundreds or 500s or 50s or what package size it comes in. But that number is specific. Two things that we need to know here is that the AWP or the listed price is specific for each NDC number. There are companies out there that I call the Bibles of drug pricing. They're called Facts and Comparisons and uh, uh, First Data Bank. And all they do is they collect data from manu any kind of manufacturer, whether they're regular manufacturers or people that, that buy the drugs and repackage it or whatever. They turn in a set of, of identification NDC numbers and pricing data connected to that. And these databases collect all that information and they, and they compile it, and then they sell that information to payers of prescription drugs. Again, Medicaid programs, insurance companies, uh, PBMs, who are actually paying for those drugs. So two things we need to remember is that there's, to, to every set of pricing data, of which AWP is one of the numbers, there is an NDC number attached. Secondly, and very important in this equation, if anything changes in that number, if that number becomes unique by changing any number in it, there has to be new pricing data attached, and that, be, and that opens an opportunity uh, for, for the PBM in this case. See what happens. Now, I'm going to switch over to the brand name just to keep, the, again, keep the math simple and show you this 100 size bottle in pharmacies now is, is over $180 probably a bottle because the average prescription price is $115, and it doesn't come close to averaging 100 tablets. But $100, 100 tablets makes it a dollar tablet. That makes the math simple, and even I can do that. So let's go through that. If you're at a rate of AWP minus 14 plus 2, 14% 14 off 100 is $14. So you have $100 AWP minus a 14% discount or $14. Pharmacist gets a $2 dispensing fee. The pharmacy is paid totally for that drug, $88. Some of it's co-pay from the patient. Some of it's amount the company pays. But the facts are the pharmacy gets a total of $88 for that prescription. Now let's go over to the mail order side. And the first thing you notice is you say, wait a minute, Mark, you, you've it's not a hundred dollar AWP anymore. It's 150. Well, this is the game that's been going on in mail order for a long time. Is that that, that PBMs change the AWP of the drug? Now they do it in one of three ways. Either they go directly to the manufacturer, and when they go directly to the manufacturer, they say, "You make this product in hundreds and five hundreds. We would like to buy fifty thousand, hundred thousand, whatever tablets from you for use in our mail order, and we want you to package them in two fifties." or 125s, or 72s, or whatever number works for them for whatever reason, what happens when you change the package size? The last two numbers of the NDC number change, and there has to be specific new pricing data given to that NDC number, and the PBM influences that to the, to the, to the drug company. The drug company doesn't sell it to anybody else. I've seen one of these bottles. It was black and white, said for mail order only on it, stamped on it, and, and so they set up AWP basically where the PBM wants it. Now, I used 150%, and I did that because in the examples I looked at, I never saw one under 150%. I didn't see it where in the PBM situation where they ever would change it less than that. They wouldn't fool with it. So in, in those particular examples, I've seen it three and 400%, but I hadn't seen one that was under 150. So if you just do the math, 150, now it's the ADP is 150. You've got a 20% discount in mail. So 20% of 150 is 30, 150 minus 30, no fee. And now you've paid $120 for an $88 prescription. A couple of other ways it's done. I said the first way was directly from the manufacturer through repackaging companies who re buy the drug in bulk and then they repackage it and sell it to whoever uh, and, and the AWPs are established. We've got people at the wheel. We've taken the Visa and MasterCards of prescription drugs and we've handed them the industry and they've abused it, and it's time to make them do it the right way if they're going to stay involved or get somebody else to do it. 